This lead comes from one of the gauges on the bottom of the load cell. It's connected to plus five and then to a point over here on the breadboard. This lead comes from one of the gauges on the top. I'm going to connect it to that point on the breadboard and back over to ground. As a result, that'll be two and a half volts because both of these resistances are the same at about 120 ohms. Very close to the same. I've hooked up the gauges to form a Wheatstone bridge. So this is one of the gauges that's on top and it's connected between positive and a point over here on the breadboard. This is one of the gauges from on the bottom and it's connected between that point on the breadboard and negative. So between the two of them they form a voltage divider and the voltage on this blue pin is about two and a half volts because these resistances that I've got connected, these strain gauges, are about equal. On the other side of the bridge this lead is coming from the bottom it's going from positive to the connection in between and this lead is from the top it's going from the connection in between down to ground so this voltage here on the orange lead is also about two and a half volts now when these change they'll change in the opposite sense this lead this gauge that's on the bottom if we add a load its resistance will decrease while this gauge that's on the top its resistance will increase and the result will be an increasing difference between these two voltages with the bridge hooked up I've got a very small voltage about one millivolt across the bridge on the on the measurement here I'm going to need to amplify that with the amplifier. If I push down, the difference goes up. If I pull up, the difference goes down. I've got the leads this way and it's showing a positive value so that means that this side is the higher voltage than that side the way I've got it configured. So I've connected this higher voltage to pin number six, the positive input pin on the amplifier. This is the same INA125 amplifier we used in lab 2. We're going to need it again in lab 3. This time we want to hook it up with a pseudo ground operation so the voltages from our bridge on the output will vary up and down above and below 2.5 volts. As before, the black wire is connecting pin 3 to ground for the power supply and the red wires are connecting pins 1 and 2 to plus 5 for the power supply and to keep the amplifier from going to sleep. For pseudo ground operation we get a 2.5 volt reference from pin 14. We have to connect that over through this white wire to pin 5 and to pin 4 on the other side of the uh, amplifier. This 220 ohm gain resistor connected between pins 8 and 9 sets the gain. So for 220 ohms that gain turns out to be a factor of 277. As before, pin 10 and 11 are connected. They're both providing the output information. This 10K resistor provides a load resistor connecting the amplifier output to the common voltage on pin 14 here. That's the two and a half volts. So it allows some current to flow from here over to here. This black wire connects pin 12 to ground. For recording data on the Arduino, I've got this green line connected to analog pin A0 and it's coming from my reference voltage at two and a half volts. So that's going to give me a constant measurement of just what the reference voltage is. The yellow line is coming from pin 10, that's the amplifier output. So that's going to give me the information about how much input is being applied to the amplifier and what the output voltage is. The orange and blue wires here connect the bridge over to the amplifier. 
The orange one I've measured with my multimeter and I know it's a bigger voltage than the blue one. It's more positive. So it goes to pin 6, the positive input line. The blue one goes to pin 7, the negative input line. The output is attached to the amplifier output on the multimeter here and we see it's reading 2.8 volts DC. If I apply a load to the load cell the voltage increases. If I let it off it goes back to 2.8 and if I pull up on the load cell the voltage decreases.